Hello, great people. Welcome back to our channel. We are so excited to have you again. From all indication, it seems that uh, one of the South Eastern governor who is overly interested in presidency come 2023 for the Ndibos have started seeing a particular handwriting on the wall and he is already speaking out and crying foul. You're going to hear what he has to say about the issue of uh, presidency come 2023 if it is not given to the Southeast. Before he left PDP, actually, uh, and defected to APC, uh, a lot of people said that actually the purpose of his defection was because he wants to, you know, get uh, a ticket, presidential ticket. And he said no, but right now he's speaking about it. And I can still remember that the wicked told him that what he's looking for in APC, he may not see it. And it seems that the handwriting on the wall is clearly showing that. And you hear what he's, he has to tell both APC and PDP about Igbo presidency come 2023. Now, in another news, uh, um, you're going to also hear the shocking move by the hunters in the northern part of Nigeria, precisely in Niger State what they have done to ban it. I think it's no more time to just give up security to the to the um, police or to the security authorities. It is now everybody's a face and you see the huge success that they have recorded in the exercise they took. We're going to be looking at all of this in a jiffy and give you further analysis. But before we do that, if you're not subscribed, hit on the red subscribe button and also on the bell icon so that you can get a notification anytime we publish our video. Governor Umayi of Ebony State on Friday said that he will feel very bad if his party, the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, denies the Southeast the opportunity of producing President Muhammadu Buhari's successor in 2023. Umayi, who dumped the People's Democratic Party, PDP, for the APC in November 2020, stated these while featuring as a guest on Politics Today, a program on channel television, According to him, it is the desire of all Igbo people that both the APC and PDP should give the Southeast a chance of producing the president in 2023 in order to ensure justice, equity, and fairness. According to his word, he said that the heartbeat of the people of the Southeast is that they should be given a chance, whether in PDP or APC, for the presidency of this country for reason of equity, fairness, and justice. I took that position in PDP, and one of the reasons I took that position was because the Southeast people have supported PDP all the way, and they have never been given any opportunity to do that. If I follow APC for the length of time and they don't give Southeast an opportunity, I will feel bad. I will feel bad, but what I will do is what I will do if I stay this length of time like I stay in PDP and that happened, I wouldn't be able to change. It depends on what God places in my mind, but I feel strongly that the future of this country is in the hands of God and what pleases God, he will do. Remember, when I joined APC, I did not join APC because I needed to insist that South East must be the next president. I never did. I joined APC with my heart and the support of Mr. President and in appreciation of all his support even when I was in the other party and also to prove that Igbo man believes so much in one Nigeria. That is the reason why I joined APC apart from my protest of injustice meted out to meted out to southeast in pdp meanwhile in another development at least 47 bandits troubling shiruru community in niger state have been hacked down by local hunters the hunters in a sting like oppression raided a riverside community in magami between shiruru and rafi local government area on wednesday and took down the bandits. According to a news dissemination platform, PR Nigeria, the community which is close to a river has been used as hideout by Niger bandits who also established their camps in the Axis. 
a police intelligence officer who asked not to be mentioned, confirmed that several bandits also fled with gunshot wounds aside those killed. According to him, he said, I can tell you for a fact that the bandit made their waterloo. At least 47 of them were eliminated by the hunters who participated in the operation. Pure Nigeria could not confirm if the hunters are part of the recently inaugurated Niger Special Vigilante Corp, NSVC, which was formulated by the police and the state government to streamline activities of the local security outfit into one special cop. During the inauguration of the COVID in June 2021, Niger State Governor Bubaka Sani Bello said banditry activities would not be would not intimidate the people or the government as they would not allow bandits to change the style of living of the people. Sani Bello had said that bandits wants to force us to change our ways of life in Niger State, but we wouldn't allow them. They stop our children from going to school. They stop us from traveling. On our roads, they stop farmers from going to the farm, and now they're trying to stop us from everything. But we will not be intimidated. We will not allow that to happen. We will continue to live our normal lives. Wow. Wow. This is really interesting. But first of all, let's take a look at uh, what um, Omai is telling Nigerians right now. Now, first of all, I, I like to reiterate this, that uh, when he wanted to come to APC, I could still remember that some governors in PDP, especially um, Governor Wiki, had told him that what he's yearning for in APC, he's not going to see it. You understand? And uh, according to him, his living was because of the level of injustice that was meted out to the southeast in um, PDP. But right now, I, I feel that he has already, you know, he has started seeing what is going on in APC and the level of um, lack of readiness on the part of the northern part of Nigeria to release power to the southeast. Most of them believe that you, don't, you can't just sit at home without proper you know, collaboration with other uh, ethnic group or other uh, geopolitical zone and you expect power to just walk in and get introduced to you like that that is not possible and uh, you know with what we are seeing uh, what um, what he is seeing yes the handwriting of uh, these guys in the war has clearly shown that it's too late to change come for him and it's also too late for anything to be done Though he said that his main purpose of coming to APC was not for presidency, but that to prove to PDP that they have not treated the South East now well. But I believe strongly that before he made it, made his way down to PDP or APC, he you know had that in mind to be at least a part of uh, those that will be recommended for the position of presidency. And uh, already people at the, the, the South Easterners have already been rolling out, you know, a lot of requests to the Northerners and everyone concerned. And they are telling them that they should consider a South Easterner. But with the way things are going, it seems that the words of Mazinam Dikanu is coming to pass, you know, because I don't see the possibility of... Uh, the southeast, except they start early enough. Don't forget that Ohanes and Libo have been calling on the northern part of Nigeria, but I, I feel that that call is not what is needed right now. If they have interest in presidency at this point, it, it should be something that a delegation uh, made up of Ohanes and Libo, made up of all the five uh, you know, southeastern governors and other key traditional rulers should pay the president a visit, or even not the president, but at least, you know, um, the, the, at, at least key stakeholders in, you know, um, APC, pay them a visit, PDP, APC, pay them a visit. And then let's discuss the National uh, Electoral Commission, oh, sorry, how do they call it? Um, the people who are the key decision makers, you know, the lead people in these two parties, you meet them and see how you can negotiate things and then start paying courtesy visit to the northern part of Nigeria, to the southern part of Nigeria, the other geopolitical zone. Put things on the table for them to see and let them understand what you intend to do when given that opportunity. That's totally politics. Politics, you don't just sit back and see it come to you. And I'm, I'm, the, the fear is already, you know, glaring that it may not 
will go to the southeast as most people have been yearning for. And um, apart from that, let's look at what these guys have done. I, I think for the case of uh, what the you know hunters did in Niger State, it's something that every state that is being troubled by bandits needs to queue behind this, and they need to get the support of the government. Yeah, we know that there are some of the states that are already at the boundary you know, of other countries where those, you know, bandits are coming in and, you know, they are much, but something like this can go an extra mile to correct the effect of this bandit in some northern part of Nigeria. I mean, look at what the decision that uh, someone like the governor of uh, Kaduna had taken. I was talking about El Rufa. He came up with an executive order that there will be no importation of cows or livestock in and out of of their state there wouldn't be any ex exportation of livestock neither any importation of livestock such must stop because that had always be that had been the avenue that uh, these bandits have been using to crawl into their territories and they're trying to stop it or oh, everybody needs to queue up behind this and you know correct things once and for all but i like to